So, good morning, good, good afternoon, everybody. Um, there is obviously some people remote, so that's why I'm saying that. Um, I'm El Rabai, and uh, welcome to the LF Energy Embedded Submit. Uh, I will be your MC today, so that's why I'm, I'm here, and uh, I hope we're going to have a lot of interesting talks in the, in the energy transition and uh, about EV charging and uh, how we manage substations and so on. I want, of course, to thank all the committee of the LF Energy Summit, uh, LF Energy Embedded Summit, sorry, LF uh, Embedded Summit. And, um, well, uh, I think we're going to start first uh, with Aurelia Watare from RT. And uh, I invite you to join me now. Thank you. So welcome, hello. So as I already said, I'm Elwa Bai from South Africa Linux and Aurelien Watare from RTE. And today we're gonna present you how uh, we ensure requirements on the CPAS project, uh, LF Energy project, and especially how we test and uh, do continuous integration in your project. Hello everybody. Uh, so first, just a few words about RTE. So RTE is the French uh, TSO. Uh, it means that uh, our job is to bring the power from uh, generation up to our clients. Um, and uh, we are operated in, in France. Some words about Savoie Linux. So we are a French and uh, Canadian company and we are doing uh, business uh, since almost 25 years now. And we are actually expert in open source technologies, and we are doing engineering product in different areas, uh, like medical, robotics, avionics, energy, obviously. We are a member of the LF Energy as a general member, and um, we are a member of the Yocto project, and we are also, of course, a member of the Linux Foundation. So actually, um, we met uh, Aurelia and me, each other, in uh, ELC in Lyon in 2019. And uh, Aurelien had a project with RTE to uh, use virtualization for substations. And uh, we actually really work on that in uh, some other areas like avionics. And we, we start with a proof of concept together. And we made more and more work. And uh, at the end, we, we actually shared that to the CPAS project of the LF Energy. So let me give you a bit of context, what we are, why we are doing this. Uh, as you all know, renewable energy sources, so wind, uh, wind uh, generation or solar generation are growing. And uh, as a TSO, our goal is to integrate those new sources into the network. And to facilitate that, we do that through our substations. However, um, the substation were not made for that. They were more made to integrate nuclear or big generation uh, sources. So they are made to be built for stability and longevity. And with renewable energy sources, we need more, more flexibility. So we need to think about new solutions that can help us to integrate those uh, production more easily. And that's where uh, virtualization uh, arrive. Uh, basically, uh, the old system, in the old system, the hardware and the software are, are bind together, so it's not very flexible. And like it was done in the telecom sector, we wanted to split both to have on one side uh, the hardware, and on the other side, the applications. So we want to mix uh, traditional common system and control with the new uh, use case that we have. And for that, uh, we need a virtualization. However, it's not any kind of virtualization. It's virtualization for real-time critical applications. 
So we need to ensure that the application that will be hosted on CPAS can run in the, in a, in, in the good condition. So for me, it's a 90 and OT convergence project because we want to benefit from what was learned from the IT world, but at the same time, we need to ensure that we, we keep to have the good performance for the OT application that are critical for the system. So what is CPAS? CPAS is an integration project. We do not reinvent the wheel. Basically, we, we will integrate what already exists, like KVM, Open vSwitch, Ceph, Real-Time Linux, Pacemaker. And uh, since we need, as I said, uh, it's, uh, they are critical applications, they cannot be stopped, uh, CPAS uh, allow you to build a cluster for high availability. So CPAS is made to run virtual machines that host those critical applications. One question that you could have is why do we use a virtual machine? Why not container, for example? Because uh, there is a transition, and today uh, the different vendors will provide you with their own applications, and they have their customized virtual machine with their customized real-time kernel. And they can use different versions of kernel. So using a container uh, to this approach it was not very uh, for the first step was not very uh, good way to ensure the, the performance and stability. So what do we need to, to build a CPAS? Virtualization, we talk about that. Real-time performance, high availability. Of course, time synchronization because the, the, the data that, that we have for the, this application are are a stream of time stamping data, so we need to be sure that the, the time is, uh, is, uh, is broadcast everywhere. Of course, good network performance, and since there are critical installation, uh, cyber security. So uh, in the end, with CPAS, you have a Linux distribution, uh, the, all the configuration tools to make it uh, the way you want, and the most important thing for our sector the test. Basically, CPAS is about testing, testing, testing to be sure that you can install this kind of new device into your uh, substation or your other. Thank you. Um, so as uh, Aurélien already explained, uh, CPAS is about uh, Linux distributions. And actually, we have two of them with some pros and some cons. So the first. Uh, version we made of CPAS was based on Yocto. We, we are doing Yocto. I'm doing personally Yocto since years, of course. And uh, it's, uh, it was very really suitable because it allows you to create your own Linux distributions. And um, regarding all the performances, cybersecurity we need to uh, address, it was definitely a good choice to make sure that we can customize everything uh, in the way we want to and achieve the performance we want to have. So because you can have the ability to customize every piece of software and uh, something that is quite important and uh, uh, regarding the regulations, it's, uh, it provides uh, some clear information about uh, software, bill of materials or SPDX. But the drawback of Yocto is of course that it's uh, not easy to play with. Uh, you have creating and compiling everything from scratch. That's the reason also we made a version of Debian, which is more, uh, I would say, following IT philosophy, where you are not compiling anything, you are just using pre-compiled packages. And actually, we managed to have similar performance results with Debian that we have with Yocto, uh, with pre-compiled packages. So the, the, the philosophy there is more to uh, to use infra as a code. And uh, we actually maintain both versions and we have some customers that are more using Debian and some others that are more using Yocto. But we can speak about that later. So as already said, I think it's, it's quite important to focus a bit about what is a Linux distribution first. So in any case, to me, a Linux distribution is a, a set of packages split in user space and kernel space. And actually for each package you are doing the same 
in Debian, in Yocto, whatever, you're actually fetching the, pack, the source code because you are compiling that. You are doing the patches, so it's up to the maintainer, for instance, in Debian to do that, or we can do that also in Yocto. You configure that, and you compile with your uh, configurations, and you install that. So it gives you, uh, at the end, some artifacts like binaries, libraries, or configuration. And uh, the, the sum of that is just your Linux distributions. So the, the philosophy, it's a bit different. On Yocto, everything can be modified. And on Debian, it's delegated to the maintainer. And uh, for cybersecurity customizations, you have some steps that could be actually done by, the, uh, by yourself and some that you cannot interact with because it's uh, up to the maintainer to do that. So regarding the architecture itself of CPAS, as explained, we are uh, targeting critical applications with virtual machines, and actually we have a cluster mode uh, in CPAS. The goal of that is to actually uh, ensure that we can uh, run virtual machines even if we've got a defect, for instance, of the hypervisor. So just imagine uh, one hypervisor is shutting down, electricity failure, it can happen also, and uh, you could actually make sure that the VM could be run on the other side on the other hypervisor. So to do that, we've got um, uh, a cluster architecture, and we are actually not reinventing the wheel. We are using open source technologies. We used um, Corosync and Pacemaker and Corum that are actually technologies that developed by Red Hat and Shoes, and that um, um, kind of uh, set a, a heartbeat between machines so that you can know that someone is shutting down and now you can move some applications on the other happy result. So to do that, you also need an observer, which, is, uh, which ensures that you've got a quorum in your cluster. For the virtualization itself, we are using the de facto virtualization uh, technologies in Linux, which are KVM and QMU. And we, because we need to match uh, real-time capabilities, we are using uh, real-time Linux, of course. We are also using uh, Ceph that is developed by Red Hat as well. And Ceph uh, allows you to uh, provide remote uh, network data storage. So this is really uh, efficient for us because it allows us to uh, think the data between hypervisor so that if a VM is shutting down from hypervisor 1, you can actually restart that in hypervisor 2 with exactly the same data context. So once we've got the, the, the Linux distributions, we need to configure that. And actually, in both uh, CPaaS flavors, we are using a lot in Siebel. So as I explained before, uh, in the Yocto project, we can actually do some steps by yourself. So that's the reason why most of the cybersecurity hardening is done at the build time. And on Debian, we are using compiled pre-compiled packages, so we are doing the cybersecurity hardening with Ansible on the runtime. We have a complex network to configure, so that's why we are using Ansible to do the network and the cluster configurations at the runtime to, for instance, to create substations and to make all the connections between the hypervisor. And uh, for both, of, both flavors, we are using Ansible. So a short word about Ansible, maybe you don't know that. It's also a technology developed by Red Hat. I'm not sponsored at all by Red Hat, but they are just doing like, some good open source software. And um, it's a um, very simple uh, SSH-based technology that allows to remote configure a server, a, a VM, whatever. And it's uh, also very efficient because you can repeat the actions and make sure that you applied all the configurations correctly uh, during the uh, in production. So something um, Aurelia mentioned a lot, oops, sorry. Uh, for us as a critical application, it's very important to use uh, 
an efficient testing process. And as an open source project, of course, we need to uh, provide this uh, uh, technology to the community so that we ensure that everything coming inside the project actually uh, fulfill all the, the, the critical requirements we've got. A bit inside of CPAS, so we uh, are actually an early adoption project since April 2023. So it gives you uh, a, a set of requirements, especially on the testing itself. We have the OpenSSF Best Practice Silver badge that is also uh, pushing a lot on testing. We have about 20 repositories and uh, around 2,000 commits and we've got 700 tests. So what do we test? We've got actually different categories of tests. We are doing system level testing. We want to ensure that the overall system is working well. We are um, using a lot of tests regarding security because we are running critical applications. And we need, of, of course, to uh, ensure that um, we can run applications dealing with uh, electricity protocol to keep it short and ensure that we are matching the latency uh, required. So we've got application testing. What we can test? I think it's, uh, it's something also that important uh, depending on the distributions we're dealing with. On Yocto, actually, because we are doing everything by yourself with the Yocto project, we are compiling everything from source, we can actually interact with all the steps. We can check that we can fetch, patch, configure, build, install any packages, and of course we can check the artifacts. On Debian, it's a bit different. We are using pre-compiled packages, so most of the build process is done by Debian itself, and it's up to the Debian maintainer to check that he's able to build each package correctly. What we can actually test, it's the configuration itself because most of the time we can actually override it. And we can also test, check that the binary and the libraries we've got for each package are just there and compiled, but we, we cannot uh, modify that. So let's speak a bit about the, the testing implementation. So as Elwa said, there are several parts that need to be tested. The first is the, the whole platform. And then what is interesting for, for, for us at the end is the, the integration of the full system. So we need to be sure that the platform is safe. And then when we put all the application together on it, uh, it's, uh, it's working well and, uh, and, uh, and, and, it's, and it's stable. So to do the first pass, we, knew, we use uh, an open source framework called uh, Kukinia. It is a, f uh, a firmware validation framework. And, and that allows us to, uh, to, to launch tests each time there is a, a pull request. And, um, and uh, we'll, we'll go in detail into that uh, later. And of course, we have regular uh, regular uh, tools like SonarCube and uh, Ansible Lean for, for Ansible. Uh, so let's take a look at the CI workflow. So as we said before, there are two parts in the test. The first one is the platform and then the application and the integration. This CI is about uh, mostly the, the platform. So basically, each time there is a pull request on GitHub, what we have, we have a laboratory in this laboratory, we have real uh, high hardware. And each time there is a pull request, we will redeploy uh, the, the, the Linux distribution on the cluster. And once it's redeployed, we will use uh, Ansible to redo the whole configuration. So each time there is a pull request, we flash the machine and restart from scratch. And then we will deploy and launch all the tests. So as Elwa said before, there are today around 700 tests. So the coverage is not perfect. Uh, the ISD, each time there is a new use case, uh, we add it to this uh, bank of tests, and the system gets more and more reliable. 
And uh, so at the end, we will generate a test report. And uh, this report is accessible on, on the GitHub. And so the whole cycle takes around 20 minutes. So just to give you an, uh, a, a short view on the, on the test report, so it's the idea is to have it uh, human readable, and it's uh, split into different uh, parts. So you will find the test regarding the, the high availability, tests regarding uh, security, and tests regarding the network, and so on. Uh, anyone else to speak about this part? So let's speak about cybersecurity test. <clears throat> Again, uh, it's important to understand that um, regarding cybersecurity, um, there is some steps we can interact wi with for hardening and some that you cannot change. So on Yocto, it's, uh, you've got the wall build steps. And um, for instance, if you have a CVE, uh, common vulnerable exposure, uh, quite often you need to apply a patch. So those patches in Yocto could be actually uh, applied and you have uh, a way to get all the CVE in your distributions and to make sure that you can uh, apply upstream patches. You can do configurations, so sometimes you can change, for instance, uh, the way you are compiling a package um, to reduce uh, the, the amount of features, but also to add some uh, compilation hardenings you can build, you can install, and at the end, uh, you can make sure that you have your configuration and so on. On Debian, it's up to the maintainer to, uh, to provide that, to do the, the, the build process, and of course, uh, he's doing that for generic purpose. So he will make a default version of his package with a default hardening policy and so on. That actually sh could not be exactly what you expect, and uh, it's, it's a discussion. And you can only, as a user, interact with the configurations to make sure that the configuration you are using uh, follow your cybersecurity policy. There is a big discussion right now uh, of the regulations from US and also in Europe regarding uh, software bill of materials, supply chain for security, and so on. It's an open question. Um, I think that um, um, this model um, could uh, differently uh, achieve this, uh, this policy. Uh, some people tend to say that with Yocto, for instance, because you are doing everything from source code, you can uh, uh, precisely uh, check SBOM and uh, generate a hard SBOM uh, document. While in, in Debian, you are maintaining, you are delegating that to the maintainers and uh, uh, I think there is an open question with uh, the Debian community how we can uh, get in both SBOM uh, information and make sure that it's reliable. Actually, we just uh, made a talk uh, with uh, my colleague Mathieu Dupré for OSS Summit in Bilbao in September, and it was accepted two, years, uh, two days ago. So we're going to talk about that in Bilbao. Regarding the um, the cybersecurity, you may know that depending on your country, you have different national cybersecurity office. And because it's a, a critical infrastructure, uh, RTE, but all the others are very linked to those uh, uh, agencies. So in France, the name is NC. And uh, actually, uh, this French cybersecurity office is designing a Linux recommendation uh, document that lists a strong list of requirements we need to follow. And you have also similar document in US, in Czech Republic, I, I guess. So um, uh, what we design, and the goal of course it's, uh, of CPAS is to be an international project. We do have um, generic CPAS test ID, and we are doing compliance metrics so that we can ensure that, for instance, uh, the requirements 11 of the NC is actually implemented because this test, this test, and this test are passed. So it's something that we can definitely, by design, provide for other countries. And uh, we think that uh, it's very important also to streamline this process in the CI so that we ensure all the time that cybersecurity requirements are fulfilled. 
let's talk about the application test. Okay, so we speak about uh, the, the test for the platform. And uh, at the end, what we need is to integrate application and to be sure that those applications can run well. And uh, so in this case, uh, I will just focus on, on the energy sector. It could be different on, on other sector. Uh, what we use in uh, the energy sector is the IEC 61850 standard. Basically, it's the standard that uh, describes the data model that f to exchange data between your application and also the protocol that you will use. And uh, so to be sure that our platform is safe to host uh, this kind of application, we need to validate at least two things. The first one is the cyclic test to ensure that the critical application, that, that basically are protection that protect the, the network, uh, that the, the cycle is, is respected. So for that, we use a cyclic test. And one of the most important thing is to, to also be sure that the network performance are good and the latency are good. Because to give you an idea, uh, the application will exchange data and basically they will get a set of new data each 200 microseconds, roughly. And we cannot uh, lose packets and the latency cannot be bigger than, I would say, five, 500 microseconds. Because if it's more, the, the data is not uh, relevant anymore. Uh, so today, the test that we have is that we deploy a VM. We have a, a, a packet sender uh, in our VM tools. And this packet sender will send packet to the VM. And then we can check that the stream is OK to make it simple. And uh, we also have a cyclic test inside the VM. And what we achieve is to, we, we, we are confident now that the, that the, that the performance are, are, are enough for, the, for this kind of application. Uh, and then once we, were, we, we ensure that, what we did, we, we implement uh, re, uh, real applications uh, that were provided by our vendors that normally sell hardware and software together. They were, they were, uh, they were kind and they provide us with the virtual machine. So what we call virtual ID, basically, ID is an intelligent electronic device. It's the, the, the device that we used to have in the substation and they provide us with a virtualized version of that. We put that on the CPAF cluster, and uh, we have uh, in our laboratory that, that actually we want to open to others that want to make tests, we have what we call hardware in the loop. So basically, we have big simulator that can simulate the network. And then the, you see the picture uh, with the tree. And basically, we can simulate uh, a fault. For example, uh, in this case, it's a, uh, a tree that will uh, touch the line and then we have to, to, sh to, to stop the power. And for the virtual ID, it will be like it, it is in a real environment, in real time. Uh, so just to give you an, uh, an idea, the hardware in the loop time uh, cycle is around uh, 10 microseconds. Uh, so on the right, you see we, we, so what we did, we generated a, a fault. And uh, at the top, you see the, the trip of the protection. So we validate that when there is a fault, uh, the virtual ID behaves well. So it means it detects the fault, it trips, and the tripping time is good. So to go to production with protection, basically what you need to do is instead of playing just one type of fault, you need to play a uh, dozen or type of faults. And then you will run that uh, continuously during a couple of, of months uh, and, and see, the, see whether the, 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 there is any jitter, you drop any, anything. So what's next? Uh, the first thing is moving to production. So uh, right now, actually, we, we deploy uh, uh, CPAS in uh, one of our substations. Uh, and so it will go in production uh, by October. Uh, 
but uh, today we decided, uh, because it's a critical system, to host in CPAS everything but the protection. So the protection are still a physical device, but all the automation, uh, gateway, uh, uh, everything that is critical but can have uh, not as critical as the protection uh, are, are inside CPAS. Uh, the second point is, uh, uh, as a TSO, our goal is to is to to push the market, but it's not to to provide virtualized platform. So that's why we are discussing with third party that will build a support offer on top of this open source project because that's, that's what, as a, as a client or as a vendor, that's what we need. Uh, the third part is the enhancing factory acceptance test. So like I, I said, uh, to bring this technology, everybody is working on those technology, but you need to have confidence for critical application. So uh, our goal is to, we have a laboratory, and it's to, to work on making a kind of certification uh, to, and to discuss with people to have all the tests that give you confidence that you can install that for a critical application. And so to that, of course, it's a use case, more and more testing and, uh, and so on. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, last point that it's uh, quite important to me, it's uh, regarding, as, uh, as I already explained, the regulation and this SBOM supply chain support. Um, there is definitely, uh, it's one of the hot topics right now, and I'm sure that you already heard about that. So, uh, the way we want to have it is to, we are an open source project, so we want to follow the rules, so we want to make sure that we are using the right technologies and interacting with the with the right uh, uh, um, standards to provide SBOM uh, and supply chain support. So thank you. So um, there is some, um, this is, was a kind of short introduction of CPASS. Um, actually, you're going to have a, a more technical and practical uh, uh, demonstration this afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, with uh, Florent from RT and Mathieu, my colleague from uh, Sour for Linux. You have also, and uh, was not mentioned there, uh, another um, uh, talk at the end of the day by uh, Enguerrand and Mathieu regarding uh, how we implement actually cybersecurity tests uh, in both Debian and Yocto. And it's quite interesting to see what we can do, what we cannot do. Um, so CPAS is an open source project. We've got a governance. We actually, and it's quite important to mention, it's not only RT and Sour for Linux. We've got a uh, lot of people in the project involved. We've got GE. We've got uh, Schneider also coming. We've got Aliander that is here. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's good. And we are, that's the power of open source. It's to, to have people around. So um, we've got a website uh, where you have the description of the project. We've got the wiki. Of course, we've got the GitHub, and uh, that's where all the power is, and uh, uh, in the code, and uh, in the issues, and in the, the discussion you can have. Uh, we are quite also uh, uh, responding on the Slack channel, so feel free to come. Don't be shy, and uh, it's it's what is interesting to me. It's uh, that the CPAS project is. Uh, application projects for, for the energy, and uh, we see that it's uh, quite important, but it's also definitely a, an IT project uh, with a lot of, uh, uh, lot of actually uh, technologies uh, in Linux, in networking, in uh, real time, and so on. So it's quite interesting to work on that. That's all. Um, we have time for questions now, so don't be shy. Thank you. <clears throat> Any question? Yeah. Uh, I'm just curious about the uh, how you perform the tests, and if you have many HIL rigs 
and how you have set it up? Is it one or do you use uh, Lava or something? I know Lava, obviously. We're not using Lava. We are actually um, doing uh, the, it depends. Um, on Debian, we are using uh, LVM to roll back on the systems. And on the Octo, we are using SW update to, uh, to, uh, to provide to, 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 and to roll back to the, to the previous versions. And then we are most of the uh, test orchestrations is done by Ansible. So we are just uh, uh, triggering uh, Ansible Kukinia uh, to get the test and we are getting the artifacts and then we are uh, using GitHub to, uh, uh, to, to, to display all the test results. Is it clear? Thank you. Thank you for the nice talk. I have one question. It exists also a 6750 model for the infrastructure itself. So normally you can uh, also model the, the virtual switches, the infrastructure. Is this also scheduled or not? Uh, um, not you're talking about the application or the? No, the integration platform. So if I run more virtual servers, infrastructure, also in the 61850, you can also have a 61850 model for the server or for the switch, for example, yes? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, okay, I understand. I would say it, it, it depends. Why? Because, for example, we, we found in, a, in I, I, don't, I didn't speak about that, but internally we have a big project for a new uh, digital substation. Uh, uh, <coughs> and, of course, uh, the question was about what do you modelize in 61850? And uh, we found that Regarding the IT part, we, we, we maintain it to the minimum because we prefer to use uh, existing technology like SNMP or two, so to have two different pipelines and to not reinvent the wheel. Because what we were doing is, okay, I'm going to modelize that in 61850. Oh, but it, it already exists in IT. So uh, it's, it's always, uh, uh, you have to provide the, the operator with the right information without reinventing the wheel. So it's a, it's a trade-off. I think we have time for our last question. So please. Okay, that's good. We are on time, though. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> so the... I'm the MC as well, so uh, I will uh, move to my new job. Um, so the, the, the next uh, talk, it's, uh, it's at uh, 9.50, and uh, it will be Kai uh, from uh, the company Pionix that will uh, uh, discuss open hardware and software for EV charger, a very exciting uh, talk. And uh, we have short time to, uh, for a break, but then uh, we will welcome Kai. Thank you.